Hey there, good folks. It's Ken Kunin from On Song International. Hope you're keeping well. From our uh, private Facebook group, Daniel Turner, he had a question about when is it ready to gig. And I think what he was talking about was when are you ready to do a solo acoustic show? Um, a lot of people in the group are solo acoustic performers. Um, that's not to say that there's not bands because there's plenty of bands as well. There is something that's probably a little bit more intimidating and a little bit more challenging about playing solo acoustic music, whether you're at a piano, whether you have a guitar, is that you are bloody naked. You really are. There's all sets of eyes are directly cast at you. It's not like, okay, someone's checking out the drummer and someone's checking out the bass player, lead guitar player, keyboard, etc. cetera. It's, it's you, hombre, and, um, or it's you, madam and you gotta be ready for that. So I wanna do a little bit of a series, and today's part one, about getting ready for that event. Um, first thing I wanna mention is that I'm not a huge fan of open nights, and or open mics, I should say. And the reason being is, is by the time that you're actually in rhythm and you may have the audience on your side, you're already off. Also, you're, the audience is influenced by what's come in front of you and what's come be after you. So for me, I got probably enough ego to sort of say, hey, you know what, it's my turn, and I'm gonna captivate you for the next 45 minutes or an hour. That's me. To me, I wouldn't necessarily wanna get on stage until I know that I can deliver that. Now, before you deliver that, you gotta think of a set as basically like a film. You're gonna have a beginning, you're gonna have a middle, you're gonna have an end, you're gonna have climaxes, you're gonna have quiet moments. The point being is, is you want to have that variation to keep your audience engaged from beginning to end. If everything is at the same pace, you know, 60, 80 beats per minute and you're strumming everything and the audience is kind of being lulled to sleep, not a good thing. So that's why I'm always going to be a fan of learning how to finger pick if you don't already or being a flat picker or perhaps having an electric guitar and an acoustic guitar, things to change texture so as the audience I'm not bored shitless. So that's, that's uh, very important. So think about your set list. If, uh, if you're worried about how that presents, well use your, use your bloody phone or use a camera and film variations of it. This is what that set looked like with me starting with this song and me completing with this song. Um, think about when you are going to talk in between your, your set. Um, maybe there's of 10 songs, maybe you're going to tell a little bit of a story about the process of writing that song or whatever that story may have been three or four times. I don't advise that you do it 10 times. I don't advise that you're a shoegazer and do it zero times. I think it's about finding that happy medium that's going to keep the audience engaged and involved. Um, also, if you're in the audience, what are you seeing? So what do you look good in? If you're playing in a, in a black room or a, a dark room with a dark stage in the dark back, you know, backlight, you might not want to wear a black shirt, okay? Um, just food for thought. That, that besides it being interesting in terms of what you're hearing, there has to be some interest in what the audience is, is seeing. Um, also, in terms of preparation, are your instruments, are, are they in proper working order? Are the patch chords or the, the leads, as we say in Australia here, do you have a backup? Do you have a backup for a tuner if you're using a tuner? Are your, if you're using pedals, are your pedals uh, properly powered? Do you need to bring extra double, you know, batteries, what, nine, nine volt batteries, whatever it may be. The point is, is you want to... You want to take out all of the uncertainties before you get on stage. When you perform, there's enough uncertainties as it is. To add to it, not really good. Think about it this way. Think about, uh, and I think most people would know the athlete uh, Rafael Nadal. If you don't, YouTube some of his uh, performances. He's a guy that has this routine, and, and a lot of athletes have a routine of, you know, takes the ball, he bounces it X amount of times, he plays with his underwear, which is kind of an unfortunate look. Um, you know, it's to the forehead, the brow, it's, why is he doing all that? He's doing all that to create a rhythm to where it's less things than he thinks about. It's more on the automatic so he can just flow. You know, baseball players, they're the same, cricketers, the same. They go through routines so everything else runs as smoothly as possible so their brain doesn't get carried away with all the mundane. I know that seems like a strange analogy, but trust me, when you're in the zone, 
you don't want to be thinking. You just want to be able to breathe and you want to be able to give the emotional content as opposed to thinking about the 15 things that are happening at your feet, that are happening at eye level, that are happening at the microphone, etc. Um, if you fail to prepare, you can definitely prepare to fail. And that means, can you play a set without constantly having to look at your guitar the whole time? You know, can, do your fingers know what a lot of those chord progressions and patterns are without looking at your hands? An important thing to realize. And if you can't do that, then you might not be ready actually to take the stage. So that's part one. Next week, I'm going to hit you, if not earlier, I'm going to hit you with part two. The point is, is I want you on stage, stage ready. I want you excited. I want you to just think about how much emotional content can you provide the listeners? How much of your soul can you get across? And the better prepared you are, the more effective you're going to be in doing just that. If this is your first time, make sure that you subscribe to our channel, for goodness sakes. We'd really appreciate it. If you can uh, hit the uh, thumbs up, ring the bell, and most importantly, leave a content, uh, content. If you can leave a, a comment, that would be terrific because that actually helps the algorithms of this channel and helps grow the channel. And then as the channel is all about you and your material, the more you grow it, the more people are going to have uh, a good look at your talents. All right, you take care. Talk to you real soon.